Hey guys, so we're on our path to fixing NHL 23's Hockey Ultimate Team. Today we are going to be discussing objectives and milestones. We are going to try and fix those because they have had a major decrease in value over the last few years. They've really followed the path of pretty much every other feature in NHL Hockey Ultimate Team in which it's a new feature, it's exciting, they pay attention to it for a year, and then rewards end up being nothing, and they're just completely removed from the game. If you remember back to, I believe, NHL 20 milestones, if you got certain milestones done, you got a guaranteed player. Actually, I think it was NHL 19. For example, you scored 2,000 goals, you got a 95 Mike Gartner. Now, if you score 2,000 goals, you get an ultimate pack and you might just pull 82 overall players, which is an absolute joke. So today we are going to go over how to fix objectives and milestones. Again, guys, this is not something that I'm going to be giving to EA and this, these are my points that I, uh, that I think they need to be fixed. This is all about discussion. So if you guys agree or disagree, let me know in the comment section down below. And if there's a wave of agreement, then I know that it is something that I should bring to EA. All right, guys, let's get into the video. All right, guys. So like I said, we are going to be taking a look at objectives and milestones. And I actually want to start with my milestones first so again in nhl 19 if you completed uh if you completed win online games you won 500 of them you got a 95 terry sawchuk which in hindsight was probably the worst reward to get for him but nonetheless you got a guaranteed card over the last few years you've gotten gold collectibles which could be turned into what you want and now it's just simply packs and uh I'm sick of just packs. Again, I'm big on guaranteed rewards. That is going to be the theme throughout all of these videos. So I've talked with my chat while my subathon is still going on. You see the timer above me if you are watching it uh, the day that this comes out. We've kind of come up with some ways and things that I think would really make milestones a lot more fun. First of all, they are milestones. They should reward you for completing specific things in the game, and they sort of do, but I want to be way more specific. So I'm going to use win online games as an example, all right? If you say, say you win 500 online games, all right, you should get a guaranteed card. Now, it could be a choice pack, which I think it should because then it's not everyone has the same card. So my idea would be one of the Montreal Canadiens, whether it be Henry Richard, Rocket Richard, Cornway, or Beliveau. They've all won 10 Stanley Cups, Henry winning 11 as a player. That just makes the most sense. Now, here is how it would work, all right? Let's say you win one online game. You just win one online game. That's it. You have you, just your normal team. You go online and you win a game. The second you win one game, all right, you get a pack that has four of those players in it. You choose the player that you want, all right, and now he is in your lineup. You now have to win with that player in your lineup. So let's say you choose Cornway, for example, as he's a really, really fun card. Um, let's say you use him. So at 10 online wins, he goes from, say, a 78 or 80 overall to an 81. You win 25 games, he goes up to an 82, and so on and so forth until the end of you know the game, essentially. So this is going to allow you to have a card in your lineup that you can use to work towards upgrading, and it completes a milestone for you as a whole. I think that this is a little bit more fun and gives a lot more connectivity and engagement to specific cards, which I think is sorely lacking in NHL. All right, play Rivals games. Okay, this is, again, these are my ideas, and again, I'm just totally open with the rewards and what they should be. So, playing Rivals games. You've played 500 Rivals games. I haven't even done that, and I play this game three hours a day from basically launch all the way until the beginning of April, uh, and I hadn't even played 500 Rivals games. So, that's a lot, and that's fine. It should be Patrick Marlowe. He has the most games played, all right, as a as a NHL. He's the most games played. You should get a Patrick Marlowe card the first time you play Rivals, okay? Whether it be 79 or 78 overall, and then the, you know, again, the play, f you'll see here, even the rewards, it's like play 5, play 10, play 25, 50. All of these intervals, you see an increase in that card's overall, all right? He's got to be in your lineup, because again, the milestone should reflect the player that you are trying to unlock. And again, if you can get to 500 Rivals wins with Patrick Marlowe in your lineup, you should get a 99 overall Patrick Marlowe. Now, some of them, I think they should just remove. It should be tied to in-game milestones or something a little bit more specific to the mode. Complete objectives, I don't want that in there. Uh, I think that one should be removed. Play Hot Rush games, that should be removed. You shouldn't get a milestone for playing games. They should just be, you should just want to play them. For example, if you watch my Hut Rush video, I think we can all agree that all of us would play Hut Rush a lot more, again, from the feedback that you guys gave me about the changes that I would make to Hut Rush. There shouldn't, you shouldn't need to get a milestone for that. It should be replaced with something that's more in-game. Uh, earn Squad Battles points. So uh, I talked about Squad Battles and how I think it should change. I think it should be by completing Squad Battles, uh, Squad Battle games. Now, a lot of people are going to be like, hey, you could cheese that by setting it to two minutes. That's that's fine. If you want to cheese it that's or play with two minutes, that's for that specific week of squad battles and all of that. It should not work towards the milestone. 
completing a four minute game, just like online, four minute period game, is how you would work towards this squad battle milestone. And who do you unlock? Well, it'd be second place, but Gordy Howe. Okay, so you get Patrick Marla for online games and, or rivals, and then you would get Gordy Howe for squad battles. And again, so if you're a squad battler and you really play a ton of them, you're going to get a card that you can upgrade for free by just playing the mode that you like playing. All right, score goals in online games. I think this should be broken up. So right now it's 2,000. You score 2,000 goals in online games, and you're going to get an ultimate pack or whatever nonsense it's set to. I think this should be broken up by position. So for defensemen, uh, left wing, right wing, and then center, obviously. So defenseman is going to be a little bit more skewed. Let's say it's 500 goals online with a defenseman, maybe even 250. I think that'd probably be a better way to go, be 250. Um, but forwards would be, you know, the other 1750, uh, for example. And I think that that would allow you to unlock certain cards. So for defensemen, it should be Ray Bork. He's the most goals uh, for a defenseman. I think that you should be able to unlock a, uh, a Ray Bork. And every time you score with him, it could be in any mode. All right, as long as it's on, and even squad battles, it's got to be on, you know, a certain veteran or all-star and above, okay? So there's no cheesing, and even that, that would still be easier. But if, here's the thing that a lot of people, like, everyone would just grind it out and get that. If people want to dump a ton of time into getting one card up to a certain overall, and again, I think they should be capped like they are in, uh, with X-Factors or capped for that month, I think that would be a great thing. Again, it could be capped, and then when it's uncapped, if you've already scored the goals, it should just automatically upgrade. I think that would be an easier way to get around this. But if someone wants to grind it out and get Ray Bork and have a massive flex you know, the first two weeks into the game, let them. It's not like everyone is going to, and it's really not going to impact your game overall all that much because the people that actually get that card, it's going to be so minuscule in terms of the amount that it won't really matter. For forwards, it could be, you know, it could be Alex Ovechkin, uh, for example, Stamkos, maybe some, uh, again, the, the players are up for debate, whoever you want, um, and I think that would be a really good option for you. Another one would be power play goals. So if you score 50 power play goals with that specific player, Okay, again, I want it tied to the specific players. Then there you go, that card upgrades. Assist, same situation. Unlock and hit a certain amount of assists. You should be able to unlock Joe Thornton. And then you use him and you can upgrade him by getting assists with Joe Thornton. That would be, again, just obviously another way around that. Some of the other ones I've got is win 50 fights. There's no reason to fight in this game. I want to see more fights. Let's see it. And you could get Ty Domi, Rob Ray, Probert, McSorley. could be a choice pack. Again, it's not going to have a huge impact on the game. But that's a flex card that you get by winning 50 fights. I think that would be super cool um, to be able to get, uh, get a specific card for that. And I think that's what a lot of these milestones should be. Flexes. Like, for free. You know, if someone sees you've got Ty Domi, that's hilarious. There's only one way to get it. And all of these cards should have master card art. They should not be, you know, headshots. You know, if they, they do they do 40 events in a year, right? Let's draw up some of the cards for the biggest milestones in the game. Another one would be shutouts. Uh, if you get uh, a certain amount of shutouts, let's say your first shutout online or in squad battles, you get Martin Brodeur, all right? And he has the most shutouts in the history of the NHL. Again, and then he upgrades for every shutout that you get. One of the more interesting ones would be open daily rewards packs. I think that should be in the game. And again, what card would be tied to it? Well, the person with the Iron Man streak and the longest consecutive games played streak in the NHL, that'd be Keith Yandel. Okay, you open up daily rewards packs, you open up one, you get a 78 overall Keith Yandel. You open up 10, he goes up to a 79, 20, 70, or, 70, or 80 overall, and it keeps going and going. But again, I think that would be a cool one. And again, all of it makes sense because all the milestones are tied to players. And again, those make sense. So that is how I would uh, fix milestones. Again, I guaranteed card rewards. And again, if it needs to be a choice pack instead of one specific card, because a lot of people are like, well, then everyone would have the same card. For example, um, playing all, playing Rivals games, everyone would have Patrick Marlowe. For sure, you can make it someone else. You can make it a choice pack of a few players that have played the most amount of games. And, and that would alleviate that, I think. I think it's on EA to make sure they're balanced as well. A lot of people be like, well, everyone have the same player, even if there's a choice pack. I think they've done better than in prior years in terms of uh, making sure that all of the cards are evenly balanced it's always gonna there's always gonna be a few that are better than others if you want to play competitively but they're all pretty even that's on ea to balance figure that out that's your job um but i think that would again milestones would be much more engaging if that was the case all right let's talk about objectives as they are right now unless it's the event one where you get a free card like style icons 
Um, again, they're just kind of overlooked entirely, except for maybe getting the collectibles to make the master set players, but I don't really think that should be the case. So daily, I think if you complete the daily, all of the dailies, again, and I'm not going to lie, I have no reason to because you get a seasonal reward, and we'll talk about seasonal rewards in a future video. I don't think they should really matter or be a thing, but anyways, if you get a daily reward done, okay, you do all of these, you get a daily reward token. Okay, you cash in seven of them, and you can get an ultimate pack, or let's say a, a jumbo premium pack, something of value, and then every single, there's different tiers. Like if you only cash in two, you get a premium pack, okay, and then a mega pack at four, and, and it goes on and on. And then it is timed out for that amount of time. So if you do seven and you get, let's say, an ultimate pack, you can't do it another one until you've gotten seven more days. You can't do an ultimate pack, save them all up, and then go and do premium packs, for example. So I think this would add a lot of value to actually completing the dailies. Weeklies, you can just get rid of them. Uh, again, they could work the same way, where you do a weekly and you you get something specific. But again, I don't know if it's really just adding more of nothing. So I would just remove it. I think the daily is fine. All right, now let's talk about the event-specific uh, objective. So as it stands right now, you've got to do arbitrary things that kind of tie into uh, some of the master set items, um, and you will get power-up collectibles or hockey idols collectibles that you can do. Again, I think this should be tied to the event and give you a guaranteed card as opposed to, you know, the power of collectibles and all of that. So let's say uh, hockey idols is what I'm going to use this as an example. Timu Solani is the hockey idol. Okay, you get everyone gets an 80 overall. This is at launch of the game, an 80 overall Timu Solani. And you've got to complete his objectives. So, you know, 70 goals or however many is in a season, get 70 goals, right? And that will uh, um, unlock his uh, one of one of his overalls. He would go up just like how it would work with milestones. And you could get him all the way up to 84 or even 86. Now, what happens in the future when an 86 is not is worthless? Okay. I'm going to talk about this in the future about team building and collections. You should be able to use that card in a collection to acquire a better, bigger card that would keep all of these cards relevant and allow you to go back and these should never go away. So if Hockey Idol's here, if the next event is Lit versus Grit, Hockey Idol stays there, Lit versus Grit comes down, and you can unlock the Lit versus Grit card, and so forth. The Under-22 comes out, all those three prior ones are still there. You can do them at your own leisure. And what this will allow you to do is, let's say there's a collection where you've got to cash in five event cards that are maximum, they've all been maxed, to get a certain special 94 overall card, 90, 90 overall card, something like that. What this will allow you to do if you start in January, if you don't spend money on the game, you're pretty much toast, right? The game cycle's over. This game isn't pay to win. I think this game is pay to play, um, which is a, just as big of an issue. So what this would allow you to do is the new player can go back and grind out these, these um, event objectives, get those cards, and then turn those cards into a free 92 or 93 relevant overall card. I think that is a great way to fix the objectives for that, and it would give uh, people a lot more reason to do them. All right, guys, so that is how I would fix objectives and milestones. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below if you agree or disagree. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give the video a like. It would help me out a lot. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.